Good morning, beautiful people from the delicious and delightful Abacos. They often say that uh, sailing or long-term cruising is doing boat maintenance in very hot and exotic locations. And today, yep, it's no exception. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the outboard and how to service the outboard, more specifically the carburetor on the outboard. For those of you that live on boats or are cruising, you will know that the outboard, the outboard and your dinghy or your rib are essentially your car. That's how you get from your big boat to the shops, to dinghy docks, to bars maybe. And the outboard unfortunately does need maintenance. We tend to find that once a season or if we pick up dirty fuel, the outboard starts to play up a little bit. And what that normally means is that it won't run as efficiently. What happens is you'll be in neutral, it seems to be okay, and then you'll put it into gear and you put a bit of load on the outboard and all of a sudden it cuts out or it doesn't wanna work. The other thing that tends to happen is that it will be okay at low revs as soon as you put the revs up a little bit to try and get some speed up, it will putter and die or just not be happy and you can hear it. And that is normally a problem with the carburetor. It's normally a problem with fuel starvation. Starvation being there's not enough fuel getting into the combustion chambers. And that is normally a problem with the carburetor. Now today, I'm gonna to show you how to take apart a carburetor, how we take apart our carburetor, clean it, put it back together and get it working. It takes me about 20 minutes to do now. When I first started doing this, it took me about an hour. And I have used this procedure on three or four different outboards that we've owned. We started with, a, when we started cruising, we had a three and a half horsepower, then we went to a six, uh, and now we've got a 15. The carburetors are all about the same. There are little variances in each, but most of all, the template, how they all are put together, is the same for each carburetor. Now, what I would suggest you do if you have got your engine from new, it will come with a manual. If you bought your engine uh, as a used item, it may come with a manual, but those manuals are no good for servicing the carburetor. There are normally two manuals you can buy. One is the user operator manual and the other is a workshop manual. Now the workshop manuals you normally have to get from the supplier, whoever supplied you or you bought your outboard from. They will tell you exactly how to take apart and put together all these things if you're not confident or if this video doesn't show you enough information. One reason I actually started putting uh, these videos together and how, why I started doing the work on my own carburetor was not so much because I'm tight and I didn't want to spend the money. It's because we'd get to an exotic location and then find we had to look for a specific mechanic. Um, and 90% of the time they were like, ah, oh, sorry, we don't deal with Tahatsu or Mercury or Yamaha. And so we were then without an outboard for sometimes days and then the outboard would be in the shop and it would always take time. So by learning to do it myself and hopefully teaching you how to do it yourselves, you will find that it will really save you time, money, and you'll be able to get back on the water much faster. So first thing to do, detach the fuel line. Then remove the lifting harness, the cover and the cowling. There's a, a quick release at the back of the cowling that allows you to take it off. That will give you access to the engine and the carburetor. So the first thing to do is to disconnect the fuel line from the carburetor. There should be a little butterfly clip there. Next thing, take the air intake or the muffler off. This is normally done by removing a couple of little grommets and taking two Phillips screws out. We on our engine also have the choke linkage that goes through there, so it just all lifts off really straightforward. So the next job to do is to just detach the throttle linkage so that we can get that carburetor off. It For this outboard, it's literally just one screw. You would detach a screw and everything slides out. Now these are fiddly little parts. There's a screw, a couple of washers, and a little custom made uh, brass nut that allows you to adjust the throttle. So really be careful with these parts. But again, use two hands, put it straight into the Tupperware container. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And finally, there are two bolts securing the carb to the actual engine itself. These are 10 millimeter bolts, need a 10 millimeter spanner. 
release them gently and be careful once you've got them very loose just undo the last couple of turns by hand so you've got a hand on those bolts so you can remove the carburetor in one piece So now that we have our carb back on board, I use a plastic tray for most of my work so that any fuel or any kind of like carb cleaner doesn't go flowing around the boat. It's all kept within this tray. I tend to use it for all work. You can buy these trays for literally nothing at a you know pound shop or a hardware store. Next job here is to unscrew the fuel bowl. Now I tend to use a talking screwdriver for this because if you use uh, an incorrect size screwdriver or an incorrect size screwdriver has been used before, the screw heads get a little bit burry and after a while they become difficult to use. So a talking screwdriver, again, you can get these for not much money. That allows you to put a little bit more torque on the T-piece handle of the screwdriver and everything comes undone far more easily. So next job, get that fuel bowl off, keep the screws, and the top of the fuel bowl cover in the tray. As you can see in this example, the, the fuel and the gasoline is now leaking into the tray. Now remove the fuel bowl with care, being careful not to damage the rubber gasket and the O-ring that holds the two together. Be really careful with this piece. This will expose the float switch. Now this float switch comes apart really easily on this carburetor. It's literally just a screw that you un undo and the float switch will lift off. We had our last carburetor. Actually needed a little pin to be pushed out which was slightly more tricky but nonetheless all fairly straightforward and make sure you do this over your tray. With the float removed you should now have access to the jets. The jets are fairly straightforward and visible and the pilot jet will normally need to be removed with a flat bladed screwdriver. Really quite simple to do. Be very careful with this. The, they are quite soft and they can scratch. So use a flat bladed screwdriver just to remove the pilot jet. The pilot jet removed will use a really good quality carb cleaner to just blow all any dirt, any blockage from inside the bore of that pilot jet. You should be able to see light through the jet if you hold it up to your eyes. Some people say that you should use a very thin wire to push that through. I actually use one end of a guitar string. Other people say it's the work of the devil and you shouldn't in case you break the string inside it. But I do tend to run a narrow gauge guitar string through as well. The other jet on this side is the main jet. You don't need to remove this. Literally just give it a really, really good wash through with car cleaner. Finally, give the inside of the bowl a really good clean with the carb cleaner because normally you get sticky residue in there. It's really good practice just to clean everything before you put it all back together. Now we do everything in reverse. We put the pilot jet back we put the float switch back on and then we reassemble the bowl. Easy job. Now flip the carb over, pop off the diaphragm cover and again give the little jets in here a really good clean. So again, give this area a really good clean. There are some little uh, holes in here to allow fuel to return. Give these a really, really good clean through. Then reassemble the diaphragm cover, making sure the gasket's in place, and that's that done. Carburetor cleaned. Finally, one last clean with the carb cleaner, a good wipe down, and that is it. The carburetor is ready to be put back onto the engine.
reattaching the carburetor is really straightforward. It's the opposite of taking it off. You offer the unit up to the engine, tighten the bolts, reattach the throttle linkage, reattach the air intake, reattach the fuel line, that's it. So with everything back in place, we can prime the fuel bulb. Once the fuel line's attached, add a little bit of choke and see if she starts up again. So one final thing to do once the engine's running, just adjust the idling screw half a turn or even less just to make sure that you're happy with your idling speed. That's it, put the cow back on once you're happy with that and everything's ready to go. for watching this week's episode i hope you found it useful being out of service as a carburetor is saying you should all be able to do if you are a cruising yacht and if you intend to go offshore and take your boat somewhere sunnier in fact even if you want to keep it in the home port it's a really useful skill to have anyway please feel free to subscribe there should be a little icon down on that side i believe feel free to click it it subscribes to our youtube channel we also have social media now we've got facebook we've got twitter we've got instagram and we also now have snapchat how does that work, eh? Anyway, that will let you see what we do when we are not sailing, when we're not videoing. It shows us the just day-to-day -day stories, behind the scenes stuff. Hopefully you'll find it really interesting. And I'll be back with another technical video really soon. The normal travel videos also out weekly. Thanks for watching.